Hey, good morning everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth and we're going to get into a family of functions called exponential functions starting with what's called a growth function. Okay, The ex general exponential function is in the form of a times b to the x power where x, the variable here, is in the exponent. Get out your uh, T84 graphing calculators. We're going to use them and we're going to uh, use them to uh, investigate the function and check our values and check the graph and everything. Um, and I'll show you how to integrate that with our lesson. We're going to do it by hand, of course, uh, meaning mentally on paper and pencil here, but we're going to back everything up with the graphing calculator, so I'll have that off to the side. Notice here that the variable x is in the exponent. As such graphs, uh, graphs of these functions are not straight lines. Okay, in, straight, in a straight line, the rate of change is the same across the graph. It does not change. Okay, It's constant. And I'm talking about the slope here. In an exponential graph, graph, okay, the ones that we're going to be exploring today, the rate of change increases or decreases across the graphs, and that's why it curves either up or it curves down, depending on the base and what's going on. Okay, and we're going to discover or investigate uh, the first family of functions called the growth functions. This is where A, the lead coefficient here, is greater than 1, like in this case it's 1, excuse me, it's uh, greater than 0, and so I said A equal 1 here. And B is greater than 1. When the base is greater than 1, like 2, or 3, or 2.5, or 3.5, or 3 and a quarter, anything bigger than 1, even 1.5 one will work, all right, you have an increasing or growth function. All right, we're going to investigate that. So let's take a look at our first graph here. I'm going to bring it down here so we can see a little bit better. Let me do that. There we go. There we go. All right. So our first function here is in the form of Y equals A times B V x power. So the variable is in the exponent now. Notice a is 1 here. I said it's greater than 0, and it is. a is 1. b is greater than 1. I set it equal to 2, so the base is 2. This is the base. b is the base. All right, And the variable is in the exponent. That makes this an exponential, and it's much different than a linear first degree function, or a second degree function quadratic, or a third degree function qubit, like I did in my first lesson. Okay, The variable is in the exponent, and that's called an exponential. And when the base is greater than 1, like it is here, base is 2, all right, you have an increase in what's called a growth function. We're going to investigate that today. Now, 1 times 2 to the x is just 2 to the x. So here's your par what's called a paired function. We're going to start with that, and everything else is like that, and so we're going to call it the offspring. y equals 2 to the x power plus 1 is similar to y equal to 2 to the x. So this offspring here is similar to its parent. And what we're going to do is understand what this plus 1 does to the function. What kind of effect does that have? Down here, what type of effect does a minus 2 have on this function and a minus 4? Okay, we'll explore that uh, with paper and pencil. We'll do it by hand, and then we'll get the calculator out, and we'll back everything up. All right, but their parent function, y equals 2dx, what does this look like? How does it behave? And that's what we want to discover here. What are the intercepts, the x, y intercepts? What's the domain? What's the range? You know, the set of all possible y values. Uh, oh, does it have an asymptote? And if so, what is it and where is it? Okay, we're going to talk about all of this. So here we go. We're going to set up a table of values here. All right, and remember uh, a couple basic concepts. All right, the domain is a set of all x values. So we're going to pick some x values here for the domain. In fact, let me write that above here. The domain is a set of all possible x values. So it's the first column. And the range is a set of all possible y values in the function, which you get out after you input an x. All right. So the domain is the input values, and what you get out is called the range, it's called the output values. All right. So notice this, though. Uh, when the base is 2, and you're taking 2 to some power here, you can take 2 to uh, any negative power. We know how to do that because we talked about that in our previous lessons. All right. We can take 2 to a negative power. We can take 2 to 0 power. You know what that is? And we can take 2 to the positive power as well. So x can be negative, 0, or positive, which tells me right now, even before I graph, that the domain, or the set of all possible x values, is a set of reals. Okay? I can take 2 to any power I want. There's no restrictions. So the domain is all reals. And I can see that by investigating uh, to the x even before I set up a table of values or even graphs. All right? I can take 2 to any number I want, any real number, whether it's negative, zero, or positive, I can evaluate it, and so this uh, domain 
which is the set of all possible input or x values, is the set of all reals, and our symbol is a capital R with two vertical lines. All right, there's your domain. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pick some uh, negatives, zero and positives. You've seen me do this before. I'm going to start off with uh, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we're going to evaluate this. And this is not going to be that hard because we know how to handle this because we've been practicing all the pre in our previous lessons here how to evaluate 2 to a negative power. All right. So I'm going to put negative 4 in first or substitute it in first. I've got 2 to the negative 4 power. Just write small. That's 1 divided by 2 to the fourth, and that's 1 divided by 16 or 1 16th, which is a very small number. Remember, 2 to the fourth is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's 4 times 4, and that's 16. All right, notice that the grouping right there. All right, it's easier to group numbers. Or you can go powers of 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, which we've done in classes a zillion times. So we're going to go left 4 up just a teeny bit. All right, 1 16th is a very small number. The next one is 2 to the power of negative 3. All right, that gives me 1 divided by 2 cubed, which we know to be 1 eighth. Uh, 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 divided by 2 squared, all right, which is 1 fourth. All right, 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 divided by 2 to the first, or 1 half. 2 to the 0 power is just 1. All right, write small here. <laughs> we can fit all these in. 2 to the zero, uh, first power, obviously that's 2. All right, 2 squared is 2 times 2, or 4. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And 2 to the fourth is 16. Now, we've done this before in class, and we've, we've done powers of 2. This is powers of 2 uh, last week in our lesson. And so this should be fairly easy here, powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Okay, 64, 128, 256, powers of 2. All right, you just raise 2 to a power. You keep on doubling it or multiplying it by 2. All right? And so, uh, notice, though, look at all these values. No matter what x is, whether it's negative, uh, 0, or positive here, notice all these y values, guys. They're all positive, all right? It's impossible to take 2 to a power and get a negative number, all right? It's impossible, and that's why the range right now, I can already see the range, it's greater than zero. All these y values, no matter what x value you pick, are all greater than zero. They're all positive. So I can already see that the range is greater than zero. But we're going to see that in the graph, too, in a minute here. All right, so now we plot, all right? Negative 4 comma 1 16th. Now remember, 1 16th is a super small number, all right? And so you've got to go left 4, up teeny bit. So left 1, 2, 3, 4. This is negative 4 right here. Just use uh, We're going to have a scale of 1. All right, and then up a 16th. And I can't even graph that above the line. I mean, it's it's so small, it's just right above the line. All right, right above the x-axis here. And it's the x-axis here. This is the y-axis here. All right, negative 3 comma 1 eighth. Left 3, 1, 2, 3. Up an eighth. Okay, it's so small, I can barely even graph it above the line. Negative 2, comma, 1 fourth. Okay, left 2, 1, 2. That's a negative 2 right there. Up a teeny bit, all right? It's increasing a little bit because 1 fourth is bigger than an eighth, but it's not going up very much, guys. And then negative 1, comma, 1 half. This is easy to graph. Negative 1 up 1 half right there in the middle. The middle uh, between 0 and 1 is obviously a half. All right, 0, comma, 1. Ooh, guess what that point is? Tell the person next to you. 0, comma, 1. I'm talking about this one right here. Ooh, no, not that one. Uh, this one right here, 0, 1. What is that? It's called the y-intercept, okay? 0, 1. Y-intercept here. Okay, right there, putting sound effects. All right, so you've, uh, I already found where the function crosses the y-axis. And that's going to be in the table in all of these guys. You're going to see the y-intercepts. All right, so it's increasing here. I told you that it was an increasing function. It's a growth function, all right, because the y values are increasing. See, it starts as super small at 1 16th, then 1 8th is bigger, 1 4th is bigger, 1 half is bigger, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. I mean, these are getting bigger. Y values are increasing. That's why we call this a growth function. All right, and then, and then, and then it goes up. All right, 1, 2, what's that? 1, 2 is right here. Obviously, it's right 1, up 2. All right, 2, 4. There's 2, up 4. 
Notice the y values are getting bigger, guys. It's a growth function. All right, 3, 8. 3, 2, 4, 6, 8. And there it is right there. 3, 8. All right, this one right here is 2, 4. All right, and this one right here is 1, 2. All right, where is 4, 16? Right, 4. There's 4. Up 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16. This is 16 up here. No, 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 no. Okay, so you have 4, 16. I changed the scale, obviously, because we had to graph such big numbers here. All right, and then you graph. Okay, no, 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 no. You go all the way up. It's a curve. It's not a line, guys. These exponential functions are curves. So you got to draw it. Whoop, let me draw it better than that. Use your pencil now. you got to go through the points. And, uh, there we go. All right, and this is called y equals 2 the x power. And there's our function. Now, notice that it never touches the y-axis or the x-axis here. I mean, the, x the y values get super small. All right, you're always going to go left and then up a teeny bit. And because of that, you no never touch the x-axis, which, by the way, has the equation y equals zero, okay? That's the equation of the x-axis. All right? Y equals zero. And because of that, your y equals zero becomes the asymptote, all right? Meaning that the function approaches it and gets very, very close to that, but never, ever touches that. It's basically a guide. It it uh, it uh, helps you graph the function here because it gets closer to it, but never, ever touches it. You can go out and, let's say, evaluate it at negative, let me see, negative 4, negative 6, uh, this is negative 6, and this is negative 8. I doubt you want to do this, but uh, 2 to the negative 8 power. That's 1 divided by uh, 2 to the 8th, all right? What is that? Let me see, 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, let me see, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, 2 to the 7th. This is 2 to the 7th. All right, 2 to the 8th is 256, and this is 2 to the 8th power. All right, so this is 1 divided by 256. By the way, that's very, very small. So I can't even graph that. It's just a teeny bit above the line right there. So the y values get super small, but they never get to be 0, and they never get to be negative. It's impossible, and that's why the range is at y greater than or equal to 0. And that's why there's an asymptote here. All right, let me highlight the x-axis. No, 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 no. This asymptote, y equals 0, all right, uh, is what the graph approaches, and it never crosses this asymptote, all right? It approaches it, gets very, very close to it, but never crosses it, um, just approaches it. Again, it approaches the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0 here. And there you go. All right, there's your first graph. Now, let's get your calculators out, and let's play with this idea here. Let's confirm what this graph looks like. All right, like I said, we're going to use the technology here. So let's go ahead and uh, change the function here. Let's enter in 2 to the power of x. That's 2 to the x power. Everybody say 2 to the x power. All right, very good. Now let's uh, set the window properly here. We're going to go from negative 8 to 8. So let's change it, negative 8 to, let's put an 8 in there. Come on, okay. Uh, to x max positive 8, so we can have basically the same scales on our graph. The y values uh, don't go below 0, so the y min is at 0. x max, we can set it at about, let's set it at about 18, so a little bit above 16 here. So let's go down here and set it to 18, so we can basically have it set the same way as our graph. Um, let's hit graph here. Let's make sure it's set to be uh, the same scale, and to do that, Hit number five for z square. That'll make the the scale and the axis the same, meaning we're scaling by ones here. And notice the shape of the graph here. It is the same shape. Oh my gosh! That means, you know, that confirms what I did over here. I told you that we did it correctly here. I noticed that it curves down here. It gets close to the x-axis here, but never touches it. Well, what the heck, guys, man? That that's called an asymptote. All right. Now, that's called our parent function, and that's called y equals 2 to the x. Our offspring, its children, are similar to this function. It has the same shape. It's just been translated somewhere. It's been shifted off the, uh, off the graph a little bit. But how? What does this plus 1 do to the graph? How does it affect it? All right, what is this? What kind of effect does the plus 1 have? I'm talking about this part right here. 
what kind of effect all right, does this have? Does this have? So what we want to do is explore this. All right? We know what the 2 the x function looks like. It's a growth and increasing function here. But what does this do? Well, let's figure this out. Okay? And the way you do that is by exploration. All right? So let's put some values in. All right? Let's do it. So let's, uh, again, uh, let's plot some values from negative 4 uh, to positive 4. Let me change, make it put some more room in here. All right, so this is y equals 0 here. So negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Oh, you know, I forgot the x-intercept here. Ooh. Well, guess what? Uh, let's go back to this real quick before I handle the offspring. The x-intercept, guess what? It never touches the x-axis, right? Because the x-axis is an intercept. Uh, excuse me, it's, a, it's an asymptote, all right? And because it never touches the x-axis, it can't have an x-intercept. So there are none in this case. Sometimes there are and sometimes there aren't. It all depends on the function. So just because I say there's none in this case doesn't mean there's none all the time. So don't believe that. It depends on the function, okay? So you've got to go with the flow and see what you got after you graph it, of course. All right, so let's, let's go for it. So negative 4. Now, again, if, if you don't have enough room in here, well, then uh, use your margin, okay? In fact, let's do that. Uh, let's use our margin because there is not a whole lot of room. So 2 to the negative 4 power. So 2 to the negative 4 power plus 1. That's 1 divided by 2 to the 4th plus 1. Don't put the plus 1 in the uh, denominator. That's bad. All right, put it off to the side. We already talked about that. It's 1 16th. So 1 16th, all right, plus 1. Well, that's obviously 1 and a 16th. I mean, just use your common sense. So this is 1 and 1 16th. Ooh, look, look at that. Instead of 1 16th, we have 1 and 1 16th. <gasps> Maybe there's a connection there. Okay. All right, let's try negative uh, 3. So 2 to the negative 3 power, all right, plus 1. So 1 divided by 2 cubed, plus 1. That's 1 eighth plus 1, which gives us 1 and 1 eighth. 1 plus 1 eighth plus 1 is 1 and 1 eighth. That's what that mixed number means, 1 plus 1 eighth. Okay, so we put 1 and 1 eighth right there. Hmm, let's compare this. The previous one, our parent was, was just negative 2 comma 1 eighth. Excuse me, negative 3 comma 1 eighth. Now it's negative 3 comma 1 and 1 eighth. Oh, maybe there's a connection there. Maybe we can figure all these values out just because, by knowing this right here. Hmm, negative 2. Let's evaluate that. So negative 2. So negative uh, 2 to the negative 2 power plus 1. Well, what's that? It's 1 divided by 2 squared plus 1. 1 fourth plus 1 is 1 and a fourth. So we'll put down 1 and 1 fourth here. Previously, it was negative 1 comma 1 fourth. Now it's uh, positive 1 and a fourth. Maybe there's a connection there. Maybe this y this plus 1 here just adds 1 to the y value. So let's see. It was 1 16th. Now it's 1 1 16th. It was 1 and 1 8th. Uh, just 1 8th. Now it's 1 1 8th because we're adding 1. Maybe this affects the y values. Maybe this shifts them up 1. I don't know. We have to figure this out. All right, negative 1, let's see here, uh, 2 to the negative 1 power, so 2 to the negative 1 power plus 1, that's 1 half plus 1, well, that's called 1 and a half, so 1 and a half, it was 1 half right here, but now it's 1 and a half because we're adding 1. Oh, it increased all these y values by adding 1. Now, 2 to the 0 power is 1, plus 1 is 2, so now instead of being at 1, it's now at 2. Holy cow. We added 1 to the y values. 2 to the first power is 2, plus 1. All right, we're adding 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. All right. 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. 2 to the third power is 8, plus 1. All right, 9. 2 to the fourth power is 16, plus 1, 17. So what you do is you fill out the table of values, all right, and then you plot. So let's plot. So you go left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's at negative 4, up 1 and 1 16th, which is right above it. So it's just a teeny bit above uh, 1. Oh, that's not 1, that's 2. I changed the scale there. This is 2 right here. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, I almost made a mistake there. Uh, 14, 16, so 1 is right here. All right. So right here, you got to go up 1, 
which is right here at 1 and a teeny bit more. Negative 3 and 1 and 1 eighth. So left 3 up 1 and 1 eighth. It's, it's just a teeny bit above the 1 and 1 sixteenth because 1 eighth is bigger than a sixteenth. And then negative 2 comma 1 and 4. So the left 2 up 1 and 4 is just a teeny bit above it. And then left 1 up 1 and a half. Left 1 up 1 and a half right about there maybe. All right. 0 comma 2. Well, guess what that represents? Well, let's highlight that. Whew. All right, tell the person next to you what that is. What's 0, 2? 0, 2. It is called the y-intercept. Okay, we already found it, so it's 0, 2. All right, 0, 2 is right there. And 1, 3, let's get back to graphing here. 1, 3 is right here. Right 1, up 3. 2, 5, right 2, up 5, 2, 4, 5. Just count. 3 comma 9, 3 comma 9, 2, 4, 6, 8, plus one more is 9. That's at 3 comma 9. All right, this one is 2 comma 5. Oops. Let's change that. Let's make, there you go. All right, and this one here is at 1 comma 3. And 3 comma 9, and then 4 comma 17. Uh, believe it or not, we can still plot this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, right there. There is, not 2, come on, uh, 4, 17, 4, 17 on the graph. Okay, so look at this. No, 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 no. you got to put sound effects in. No, 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 no. Okay, there's a point. There's a point. There's a point. There's a point. Okay, but where is the the horizontal asymptote now? Okay, it was the the x-axis here. Notice these y values here. They're getting very, very close to 1. 1 and 1 16th is very close to 1. It's right above it here. If I put in negative 5, I'd get 1 and 1 32nd, which is very close to 1. This, this uh, plus 1 here shifted everything up. It shifted the whole graph up. It even shifted the asymptote up. Let's get a red pen out here, and let's draw a horizontal asymptote at 1. This is at y equals 1. It shifted the asymptote up. Shifted everything up. It increased all the y values by 1. Look at this. From 16 to 17, from 8 to 9, from five, 4 to 5, and from 2 to 3. It just adds 1 to the y values. It shifts it up. This is a, a vertical shift up. It's a vertical shift where? Up. Okay? In up one unit. Up one unit unit, okay? And that's all it does. So I know my horizontal asymptote now. It's y equals 1 instead of y equals 0, the x-axis. Okay? It's just a vertical shift up. Uh, there's no x-intercept here in this one because it doesn't intersect the x-axis. Alright? I can put in negatives in for the exponent, 0, and for positives. So the domain is a set of all reals. Okay? There's no restrictions here. It's all reals. Uh, because, again, it's a set of all possible x values. And what can you put in the function? Well, I can put in negatives, zero, and positive, And that can put in any real number. So the domain is a set of all reals. What are the kind of numbers you get out? Well, look at all these y values. All the y values, well, let me see. First of all, they're all positive. Look at this. 1 and 1 16th, 1 and 1 8th, 1 and 1 4th, 1 and 1 half. All these values are not only positive, they're all greater than 1. They're all above this line right here. All right? They're all above y equals 1. We say the y, uh, the range, excuse me, which is set of y values, is they're all greater than 1. Why? Because, look at this, they're all above this line here. Think y values. And I'm talking about right here. This is the range right here. All right? And this is the domain. So you got to look on the, uh, in the y values for the range. And you got to look at the x values for the domain. Okay? Now let's take a look at the, uh, the graphing calculator. And let's compare this. Now... We're not going to clear out the previous one. No, we're going to go down to Y2. And guess what? We are going to plot it on the same graph. So 2 to the X power. All right, plus 1, plus 1. See this? You can plot up to, I think, 9 functions on here. And you can see its effect. Hit graph. And look at this. It shifted it up. It has the same shape, but it shifts it up 1 here. So instead of being asymptotic to the X axis, it's asymptotic to the horizontal line Y equals 1. In fact, you know what? Watch this. I can even plot that if I wanted to. I can go down to y3 and plot y equals 1. All right? 
I'm going to zoom in uh, just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. I'm going to change the the uh, Y max to uh, I'm going to change it to five so we can see things better. There we go. So this right here, this horizontal line is Y equals one. And notice our second curve here approaches that Y equals one right here. So we can see Y equals one is a, a horizontal asymptote to the second function, which is what we're working on here, the two to the X power plus one. It just shifts the whole graph up. It has the same shape, same curve, but it shifts it up one unit. So when you add one, it's a vertical shift. All right, it takes your parent function and just shifts everything up one. That's all it does. All right, and so we're understanding the behavior of these functions here. The question is, what does the minus two do, and what does the minus four do? If we understand what the uh, parent function looks like, we understand that the plus one shifts everything up one. What does the minus two do, and what does the minus four do? Well, I don't know. Let's. Well, I do know. <laughs> what What do you think? All right, so let's let's go ahead and let's uh, start graphing here, and let's play with this idea and let's see what's going on. All right, so we've got uh, we need some values here. So let's do this here. Remember, if you're when you're evaluating here, uh, use the margin in your evaluating, or get a piece of scratch paper out if you need some more room other than the margin. All right, so put your seatbelt on. Here we go. All right, let's take values from negative four to four. Oh, negative zero. That was pretty good, Jeff. Uh, here we go. All right, so let's go for it here. So 2 to the negative 4 power. This should sound familiar now. Minus 2. So that's 1 divided by 2 to the 4th minus 2. That's 1 16th minus 2. Now, this is where the fun part comes in. Now, right here, 1 16th minus 2. Now, 2 minus 1 16th is 1 and 5, uh, 1 and 15 16 but it's negative. All right, so now, now we have some negative y values. All right, so two minus one sixteenth is one and fifteen sixteenths. But this one's got to be negative because you go small minus big is negative. So negative one and fifteen sixteenths. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, next one negative three. So two to the negative three power uh, minus two. So that's one divided by two cubed. All right, minus two, that's one eighth minus two. That's negative something. So two minus one eighth is one and seven eighths. All right, but negative. So now our y values can be negative. Hmm. So this shifts, what is this gonna do? What does this do? What kind of shift is this uh, due to the parent function up there? I don't know, let's, we'll explore that. So one, let's substitute negative two in here. So one divided by or two to the negative. Excuse me. Let me start from scratch here. So two to the negative two power plus um, oh minus two. Getting a little crazy here. It's it's, uh, it's still only six o'clock in the morning. So we got uh, one divided by two squared, which is four minus two. That's a negative something. In fact, you know, let me put some more more room in here. So negative two here. Uh, 2 minus 1 fourth is 1 and 3 fourths, but it's got to be negative. All right, negative 1. So 2 to the negative 1 minus 2 here. So 1 half minus 2. That's 2 minus a half is 1 and a half, but it's negative. So minus 1 and a half. And at 0, so 2 to the 0 power. 2 to the 0 power minus 2. That's 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Ooh, what is that? Right there, I already know what that is. I can tell. Well, tell the person next to you what it is. All right. You got it. It's the y-intercept. All right. So we have a y-intercept. I already know what it is. Even before I graph. I mean, because I, I have some experience here, guys. We've been doing this for so long. All right. So uh, let me see. And then we got one here. So to the first power is 2 minus 2 is 0. Ooh, look at that. That's What's that? Ooh. What's one comma zero? Tell the person next to you. Two comma zero is, uh, or see, one comma zero is right here, one right. It's called the x-intercept. Ooh, this function has one. Ah, the previous ones didn't, but this one did. That's why I kept on saying, sometimes you have them, sometimes you don't. It all depends on what you got. It's kind of like a box of chocolates, guys. You never know what you're going to get until you look inside. All right. 
So, so far, uh, I've got a y-intercept at 0, negative 1, and a horizontal, or excuse me, an x-intercept at 1, comma 0. We'll plot those here in a minute. At 2 here, 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. 3, 2 to the cubed is 8, minus 2 is 6. All right, 2 to the 4th, 16, minus 2, 14, so 4, comma 16. All right. Hmm. So let's start graphing here. So left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, this is a negative 4. All right, down 1, uh, and 15, 16, which is a little bit less than 2. So let me see, negative 1, negative 2. So left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now you can't go down 2, you've got to go right above it. So it's right above the negative 2. This is a little bit bigger than negative 2. It's kind of hard to graph because it's so close, but that's where it is. And then we've got to go left 3, and then down 1 and 7 eighths. So left 3, 1, 2, 3, down 1, 7 eighths. Now this one's not uh, as far down because uh, this right here is more negative than this one. And then negative 2, comma, negative 1 and 3 fourths. Left 2, down to negative 1 and 3 fourths. So there's negative 1. Negative 1 and 3 fourths is just a little bit above it. And then negative 1, comma, negative 1 and a half, right about there. And then you've got 0, comma, negative 1. There's our y-intercept right there. That's your y-intercept. Okay. And then 0, comma, 1. There's your x-intercept right there. All right. And notice the y values are getting bigger here. They're getting bigger and bigger bigger from negative 1 to 0 to 2 to 4. They're increasing. So this is still a growth function. It's curving. Okay. It's getting, the y values are getting bigger. Okay. As x as you move along the x-axis, the y values are increasing here. Uh, 2 comma 2, right 2, up 2. That's 2 comma 2. 3 comma 6, right 3, up 6, 2, 4, 6, right there. That's at 3 comma 6. And the right 4, there's 4 right here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16. We count 2, 4, 8, 2, 4, I can't count, 2, 4, 6, 8, that's 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So let me see, you got to go right 4. 2, 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 is way up here. All right, and there is 4, 16. So then you start graphing here. So no, 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 you put the sound effects in. No, 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 it's curving here. No, no, no. All right, there you go. All right, and notice that. Uh, no matter what x value we pick, we can even pick negative 8 here for x, substitute it in. We're not going to get down to negative 2. All right? We're just going to get a super close number to negative 2. And that's why the asymptote right here uh, is y equals negative 2. We're going to see that on the graphing calculator too as well. So y equals negative 2 here. Y equals, there we go. Negative 2 is what's called a horizontal asymptote. Asymptote. So, well, a really weird word, but, you know, hey, that's how you say it. All right, and the function gets closer and closer to that line right there, but never ever touches it. So my asymptote here is y equals negative 2. That's a negative 2. y equals negative 2. Uh, notice that you can take 2 to any power again. You can take 2 to the negative power, 0 power, positive power. It doesn't really matter. All right, the domain is the set of all reals right there. Uh, denoted by the capital R with the vertical, two vertical lines. The range here, well, guess what? It can be, the y values can be positive, it can be zero, it can be negative, but they can't go below negative two. So all these y values, uh, all the y values, y, are greater than negative two in this case. Remember, domain, range, excuse me, domain is a set of x values, range is a set of y values. One more time, the domain is a set of all x values, the range is a set of all y values. This is the range up here, and this is domain. Let's highlight that. Domain is a set of x values, range set of y values. All these y values on the curve here, if you just look closely here, all, and even in the table right here, they're all greater than negative 2. All of them, okay? All of these, they're above that horizontal line. Now let's go to the calculator, and let's take a look. Now this time, uh, I want to go down here to y3, right here, 
and change it to uh, 2 to the x power. You know what? Let's clear this out. Actually, let's clear them all. I just want to take a look at one at a time. So let's go 2 to the power of x. All right, minus 2 in this case. So minus 2. And after you put that in there, hit window because we have to adjust uh, the window here. We want to set the window to from negative, let's say, 5 to positive 5. So we can see uh, what's going on here in the table. So, whoops, what's going on here? Uh, my window setting here. So negative, negative 5, positive 5. There you go. So x is negative 5, going from negative 4 to 4. So let's set it from negative 5 to 5. Y values, we can we know they're all bigger than negative 2. So y minimum, we'll set it at negative 2, negative 2, so we can see the graph. Actually, set it equal to negative 3 because I'm going to uh, graph y equals negative 2. And then set y max to up here 18. All right, so we can see the graph. All right, so hit graph now. And I also want you to see the the uh, the asymptote. So let's graph y equals negative two. Just type in negative two there. Watch this. You'll see the calculator and graph the horizontal line. See this horizontal line right here? That's at negative two. And you can see. Let's hit Z five. Go ahead and hit Z five. Zoom five. That'll set the uh, axes uh, with the same scale, meaning one's up and one's across. All right. And notice it's the same curve here. Same curve. It's identical. All right. And you'll see the horizontal asymptote here at negative two. And the horizontal, line, the the one with the dots above it is the x-axis. The one below it is at y equals negative two. All right. Because again, look here. We set it y equals negative two. So you can see the behavior of the graph is the same. And if you want to see the table of values, well, look at this. Go second table, and you can see the table of values right here. Let me go up. Right here, you can see how, no matter how uh, how negative we get for the x values, <laughs> the y values never get to be negative two. They're always above it. In fact, you can go look at this. Well, it says negative two right here, but because of the calculator's rounding. But calculators, be careful. Uh, they might be a little bit misleading here because because of the rounding error in the calculator. It says y equals negative two, but that's really not the case. This negative 1.9999999 gets close to negative 2, but never really becomes 2. The calculator just rounds right there. So be careful. It's a little misleading here. All right. So these values are all bigger than, uh, greater than negative 2. And that's why the graph is asymptotic to negative 2. It get, approaches it, but never, ever touches it. All these y values are above that horizontal line. So what did this do? If you look here and you compare the uh, the first parent function to to what we just did right here, so let's bring this down here, you'll see right here that uh, the parent function to the x is the same as this one here, to the x minus 2, all right, but it's been shifted down two units. So this, this minus 2 here, all it does is a vertical shift and it shifts everything down two units, all the y values. All right, instead of the uh, the y-intercept being 0, 1, it's 0, negative 1, because 1 minus 2 is negative 1. It shifts everything down two units. All right, and that's what that minus 2 does. That's what you're supposed to be learning out of, uh, well, learning out of this lesson here. This is a vert vertical shift down. Okay, so let's write that down. This is a vertical. Oop, I uh, didn't quite spell that correctly here. So vertical uh, shift down. All right, two units. That's important to know. All right, two to the x minus two is the same as has the same shape as two to the x, but it's been shifted down two units. So the horizontal asymptote is shifted down uh, from the x axis down to the y equals negative two. All the y values, well, there are two units less because you're subtracting two. It's a downshift. All right, and if that's the case, well, guess what? This is a downshift of four. All right, this is a vertical downshift of four. That's what I predict, down four units. So all I have to do is take all these values and shift them down. In fact, instead of y equals negative two being the horizontal asymptote, what do you think it's going to be here? Tell the person next to you. Okay, and 
hey man, instead of y equals negative 2, it's probably going to be y equals negative 4. I can predict that. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, let's get some values here. And let's plot this function here. So let's, let's just plot a few. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 here. Uh, 2 to the negative uh, 3 power, so 2 to the negative 3 power minus 4 now is 1 eighth minus 4. That's uh, the same as 4 minus 1 eighth, but negative. So we know it's a negative number here, because small minus big is negative. So uh, what do we have? Negative what? So 4 minus 1 eighth is 3 and 7 eighths, but negative. So negative 3 and 7 eighths. It's a good thing we did our fraction work before because otherwise this lesson would be extremely difficult. Uh, next one, 2 to the negative 2 power minus 4, so 1 fourth minus 4. All right, we know that's negative. 4 minus 1 fourth is 3 and a fourth, 3 and 3 fourths, excuse me. So 3 and 3 fourths. We'll see this on the in the calculator too. Uh, 2 to the negative 1 power minus 4, that's 1 half minus 4. That's negative 2. 4 minus a half is 3 and a half, so negative 3 and a half. And 2 to the 0 power minus 4 is 1 minus 4, and that's negative 3. Ooh, what's that? Yes, it's called the y-intercept. Okay, so already we know what the y-intercept is. Right there. We can see this in the tables, guys. And then next one, 2 to the first power minus 4 is just 2 minus 4, and negative 2. And then 2 squared is 4 minus 4 is 0. To the third power is 8 minus 4 is 4. All right, so, and let's put one more in there, 4. To the fourth power is 16 minus 4 is 12, so 4 comma 12. So when we plot these guys, we're going to go left 3, down, not down 4, but down a little bit less. So left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down, not quite 4, but a little above it. Down, okay, so left 2, <coughs> Left two, down not quite four. Left one, down three and a half. Left one, down three and a half. There's down three, but three and a half is right about there. And then zero comma negative three is right here. There's your y-intercept. Uh, one comma negative two. One comma negative two is right there. And uh, two comma zero. Ooh, what is that? Tell the person next to you what two comma zero is. That's right. It's called the x-intercept. Okay, it's got two comma zero, and I already know that the uh, the y-intercept is zero negative three. Right here, so two comma zero is here, and that's the x-intercept. And uh, three comma four, right three at four, and then that's three comma four, and four comma twelve, right four up two four six eight ten twelve. It's right there at 4 comma 12 and then you curve it no 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 got to put the sound effects in all right so we got a point there point there point there point there point there all right and notice that we have a horizontal asymptote right here at y equals negative 4 okay like we predicted here okay that's your horizontal asymptote h a for short okay okay so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 4 because this downshift, it shifted it down. We were predicting correctly here. Um, all the y values are above this line, so the, all the y values, the range here, uh, let me use black here, all the y values have got to be greater than negative 4 because why? Well, they're above it. Look at all the y values in the table. Look at the graph. It's above that line. All these y values are greater than negative 4. The domain could be negative, 0, or positive, so it's a set of all reals again, all right, and for all these exponential functions, it's a set of all reals, because you can take two to any power you want. So all reals, denoted by the capital R. Okay, and uh, so as x increases, y is increasing here. As you increase x in the table, it goes from negative 3 to positive 4, and all of these functions here, the y values are increasing with this because the base is bigger than 1. So the relationship between the x and y is this. As x increases, y increases. Okay? As x increases, all right, it goes up, all right, y increases at the same time. Increases. Okay, it goes up.
That's a relationship. This is what happens in a growth function. Not true in other functions, but it is true in this one here. That's what growth functions do. As X increases, Y increases, and that's why it curves upward and not downward. All right, now this is a big lesson here, and I know I went fast because I'm by myself here, and I'm doing this, and I'm good at the arithmetic. So remember, this is a video, and you can pause and play anytime you want, uh, and you can rewind and go back and listen to it again, and I highly suggest that. All right, because this is not an easy lesson. So go ahead and do that. Or listen to it as many times as you want. Go back and re rewind it and, and listen to any portion that you want and practice. The next one has a base of three. Let's, in fact, let's take a look at that. All right, this is what you have to do right now. I change it from base two to base three. So you need to graph this one here. Kick in your technology to check each one. And I'll see you in my next lesson.